13th school board meeting. Um, could we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our new superintendent, Meredith Nado. Um, Meredith comes to us with 18 years of education experience. Um, most recently, she was director of instruction, special education, curriculum, um, humanities, um, and professional de development in the Oyster River Cooperative School District in Durham, New Hampshire for the past four years. Um, Meredith came on board with us um, in the mid-summer on a part-time basis and has been full-time with us since um, the 23rd of July. Um, uh, we are thrilled to have you, Meredith, and um, it's been a, a really nice start. We had a coffee last uh, Friday for the public and had probably 50 or 60 parents stop by um, to meet Meredith and welcome her to the community. And um, I would encourage anyone in the public who um, would like to, to meet her to um, contact us, and we may be setting up another coffee in the future. So. Um, welcome, Meredith. Um, I'd also like to welcome our two school board um, representatives from the high school. Uh, we have Abby Donnelly, uh, who's on the left, and Abby is um, is a junior at at the high school, and Sasha Lennon, um, who is a senior. So they have signed on for a year to provide us infor inside information from the high school. Thank you girls very much for joining us and for being part um, of our group. Technically for the TV, it's reversed. Oh, that's right. That's right. So. And shouldn't we disclose that Donnelly equals Townsend? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Abby Donnelly is my daughter. Um, so, and Sasha Lennon is, is the daughter of Sarah Lennon, who is on the, um, on the town council. So, uh, it runs in the family, I guess. We're happy to have you. So, um, with that being said, let's move on through our agenda. We have a short agenda this evening. Um, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Anything anyone would like to add? Okay, um, number two, we have approval of school board minutes. Do I have a motion for that? And these were from our regular meeting, which was Tuesday, um, the 23rd of August, 2011. Do I have a motion? Making I, I'll make the motion. Okay. I um, move to approve the school board minutes for, from the past. Okay, from the August 23rd meeting? Yes. Um, may I have a second, please? Second. Okay, Kathy. All right, any discussion around that? Any changes? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Great. All right, so we will move on now to our comments by our student reps. Um, we do have two students here from the middle school as well, so I want to welcome Gabby Raymond and Eva Mealy. Um, oh, great. Come on up. Hi, I'm Eva Mealy. And I'm Gabby Raymond. And we are here representing the students of Capleswood Middle School. This year, the Middle School Parents Association is starting a new fundraiser called Local Buy, which is a catalog that features main handcrafted items. Four citizens or businesses of Cape Elizabeth have items in the catalog. The money they get will benefit outdoor programs for the middle school. They want to send the fifth grade to the Freedom Trail, sixth grade to Chewaukee, and the seventh and eighth grade to Camp Ketchum. This week on Thursday, the seventh and eighth. Yes. This week on Thursday, the 7th and 8th grade have their open house at 6 p.m. and the 5th and 6th have theirs on September 20th. 
We interviewed, interviewed two children from each grade the, about the school year. The kids in 7th and 8th grade found that the new schedule is confusing and not as productive. Also, they wish that they were their own grade in lunch and allied arts. They're, they like their teachers and the school year has been good so far. 8th graders have been surprised about how much homework they've had. The 6th graders have mixed opinions. Some think it is well made and some do not enjoy it. This is the schedule. They all think that the teachers are nice and hilarious. They say the school year has been good. The 5th graders like having different teachers and moving classrooms. They like it more than 4th grade. The teachers are very nice. <laughs> their, their lunches are good and the same with every school year. Everyone had a good, has having a school, good school year so far and they hope to keep it that way. The harvest lunch this year will be on September 22nd. We will not have school on October 10th because of Columbus Day. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you girls. Thank you. Yes, high school. Hello. Oh, okay. Hello. Um, my name is Sasha Lennon. I'm a senior at the high school. Um, I am part of the Freshlings program that helps freshmen come into the high school and transition well. And so far, everything's going great with that. Um, the Environmental Club also had a um, vegetable sale from vegetables that we grew in our garden. That I thought that was really interesting and um, creative. Um, and I'm also on the um, high school soccer team, and so far we are undefeated. And this week we face um, Falmouth and Greeley in one week, so hopefully that goes well. That will be a, a big challenge for us. But thank you for having me. Hi, um, I'm Abby Donnelly. I am a junior at the high school, and as some of you know, or we're there. We had a football game against York, was it? On Friday, and something unusual we did was before the game, we actually had a student run tailgate in the senior parking lot, which was a huge hit. And we actually had more fans in the student section than I think we've ever had before, and that's good. Also, Spirit Week is next week, and We'll have a lot of activities surrounding that. And yeah, basically just all the clubs are starting to get up and running again, and we kind of hit the ground running. So thanks for having me. Great. Um, I actually heard there were 250 um, students in the student section. Is that right? Wow. Cheering on the football team? That's what I was doing. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. Um, do we have any comments from public from the public on agenda items? And, um, I wanted to point out that uh, although um, we don't um, have a public comment time for non-agenda items anymore. Um, anyone is more than welcome to contact us on any item and if you'd like to get it on the school board agenda uh, there just needs to be um, several days beforehand we need to hear from you and have a discussion uh, about um, putting it on our agenda so we're always happy to hear from people uh, if you have items you'd like to discuss please don't hesitate to be in contact with us all right, we will move on to item number five, which is communications and the superintendent's report. Meredith? Thank you. Make sure I sit close enough to the microphone. Uh, so let's just start by saying we had a great opening. Um, and I, I think people don't always realize all the things that have to happen behind the scenes to get the school year up and running. So our thanks to our facilities and maintenance staff, our transportation department, our food service staff, all of whom worked very hard to prepare things before people came into school so that things would be ready, ready to run smoothly. Our community services department as well. And absolutely our administrators, teachers, and staff who um, were there during the summer, before school, early mornings, uh, making sure that classrooms were welcoming and that students would be well received when, when school started. Um, included in your packet is are the enrollment figures as of September 6th. So these are just 
draft enrollment figures, um, they tend to fluctuate a little bit in the opening of school, and our official enrollment count happens on October 1st for the state. Um, but as of September 6th, our enrollment was 1,680 students across the district, so it's uh, slightly below um, June of last year, um, about 20 students below where we were last year, but I don't think unanticipated. Um, on our opening day, we were able to recognize those employees um, who've had 5, 10, 15, 20, or 25 years of service with the school district, and a list of those employees is included in your packet. I will highlight for you just those 25-year veterans, uh, who are Karen Allen in our community services department and James Ray, a high school teacher. Um, there are also a number of people in those other categories, and um, a full list of those is published on our website. Um, CIF recognized a couple of award recipients on our opening day as well. The 2011 Brownell Award winner was Ginger Raspler, who um, coordinates the Achievement Center at the high school. And the Thompson Award recipient was Elaine Brownell, who just retired from service to the district last year. So our compliments to both of them and our thanks to CIF for um, that recognition. Um, and finally, I'll acknowledge um, that we had a resignation from Melissa Stevens, a middle school um, executive function and um, RTI teacher at the middle school, and we appreciate her service to the district and wish her well in her new endeavors. And I think some of our administrators may have updates for you as well. I know Jeff Thorak anyway. Yeah. I'll be brief, but um, thank you for giving me a moment to just provide a few updates this fall. We're off and running, and uh, quite literally, Things, it's amazing once uh, preseason starts how quickly things move forward. So, um, but off and running and um, on to a good start. And really just wanted to quickly update everyone um, on our first major athletic event that we hosted on last Friday night. And uh, as our student six uh, stated, that it was a huge success. Um, it's a fantastic, I think, community event. I mean, they're all ages from um, you know, first grade right up through to our uh, senior citizens as well. So it's, it's really a community event. I'd say that the bleachers, our capacity is about 1,400, and those bleachers were jam-packed. And students were standing, so that's even increasing part of that. So I, I, and I counted the rows and depth, and I, I, I was guessing around 250 students. So um, that, was, uh, that was pretty impressive. I'd say by far that was one of the largest student um, sections that I've been a part of. So... Uh, and very appropriate, I might add. Um, I'd like to uh, just recognize Sam Donnelly, Noah Backer, and uh, Luke Sisselman for really orchestrating that event. They did a wonderful job of creating a positive atmosphere, and the uh, students just did a, a fantastic job of supporting the teams uh, on the field. Um, and I think it, I should recognize uh, Tom Cohan, uh, Tatiana Green, and Ted Jordan for really helping uh, with the barbecue. Um, that, was a, that was a big hit. It was a nice way to kind of um, bring everyone together before the game, and uh, then the students had made a big long line that almost reached the uh, entire length of the lower parking lot to the, uh, to the swimming pool for the uh, football players to run through. So it was really special, and uh, I was really, really pleased um, to see not only our high school students there, but our middle school, Pond Cove, families, um, families of alumni. It was really, a, it, was a, it was a great night and we're really looking forward to uh, feeding off that uh, positive energy into uh, our next events, um, which will lead into Spirit Week, which is next week, and we'll have some details coming out shortly for that, but uh, we're really excited, so fantastic. Thank you. Any Thank questions you. or comments? I'd like to make one comment. I went to the, I do you call it, open house on sports or whatever that you conducted. Um, and I just want to tell you, Jeff, I thought you did an excellent job. Um, it's a difficult subject to um, talk to parents and, and, and the whole issue of coaches, parents, athletic directors, students. And I, I just thought you did an excellent job. And I was surprised about how well-spoken you were. And you could, we'd easily hire you and my firm to be a trial lawyer. But you did a great job, absolutely great job. I oh, appreciate that. Thank you. Quick question. Yeah. Oh, just a second. I'm sorry, Jeff. Um, so I, unfortunately, I missed the game. I was out of town. Um, it's great to hear your, your, the stories of the game. But I was stuck reading the, the, the 
the newspaper story about it. Um, and just wanted to ask about this, this safety of the, the players, both the, the Cape players and the opposing team players, and whether um, you can you know, tell us a little bit about, about what's being done to, to protect the safety of sure. everybody yeah. in the game. Well, for the score was 28 to 17, and we didn't really get a lot of that story in the, uh, in the article, so uh, there was a lot more to it than that. Um, but no, I think there are, ton, there, there are a ton of uh, safety measures now. Um, coaches are required to take uh, a concussion course um, through the National Federation of High Schools. Um, we have an on-site team doctor, um, athletic trainers, and we have the uh, ambulance service available as well. Um, but it's a lot of education, and uh, I think not only from the coaching side, but from the officials as well. Um, they're obviously with the heightened awareness of concussions are um, really f focusing their attention on um, pr some preventative type things where hopefully kids are being safe and uh, mm -hmm. avoiding those types of things. But it is a, um, those things do happen, unfortunately, and I was really impressed with how our athletic trainer um, Dr. Murray, our team physician, and the Cape, Cape Elizabeth uh, Ambulance Service and how they responded to that and treated the student and um, followed up in a, there was an article the next day in the Press Herald that the child was uh, able to return back before the team got there and, and welcome, they all welcomed him back so he was, he was okay and um, so that was fortunate. But I was very pleased with, you know, the efforts that were taken and, uh, and uh, the uh, proactive approaches our coaching staff take and, and making sure that our kids are being safe. Okay, great. Um, anyone else? Um, I have two, two comments. Number one, just a question. Do we have ambulances at every, um, every football game? Correct. Great, yeah. okay. Yeah. I was just checking. It is that. a service that we have to pay for, but um, okay. one that we feel is, is very important yeah. to have, so. Yeah. Um, and the second is just a comment about the turf and how happy I am to hear your comments about the turf because I remember when we were building it um, that it was really sold as a community builder and as a place where kids could go and um, you know spend these Friday nights um, cheering on their team in a safe place um, and have the whole community together so it makes me really I think it's great it's really yeah, happy that um, it's being utilized to the fullest extent. It's, um, I mean, they're admit, you know, with the administration covering and having the faculty there and then yeah. these coverage as well, it is, it is really a, a safe environment for, yeah. for young people. Yeah, it's great, so that's great news. I, I didn't read these articles, but I did see the incident. And I have to tell you, I was completely impressed, but we made a great decision having a full-time trainer. She was right over there. Yes. Um, um, the coaches were there, both, both teams, uh, the ambulance got there real quick, they boarded the person. I mean, it was, it was uh, not what hap would have happened when I was in high school. Yeah. Um, it, and it was, I, I thought it was excellent. I don't know what was reported in the paper, if it was negative at all, but I thought it was a tremendous response mm -hmm. by, our, by our school system. Well, thank you, Jeff, for you. all of your work. Sure. Really appreciate it. Okay. Um, We'd love to hear from other administrators as well, if you have anything to report. Um, we didn't have student reps from Ponco. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about, Tom? Not to put you on the spot. No, that's fine. It's actually something to be proud of, just to follow up with what Meredith said. I've been here for many years, and the schools usually start with a great deal of energy and enthusiasm, but this year it seems to have topped them all. I think it's in reference to all the work that was done behind the scenes over the summer, and you're getting your money's worth from the consultants, too, because of the work that was done with professional development is bearing fruit as we speak. Probably tonight, people are studying the Daily Five and getting ready for the lessons. So it's been a great start for Bronco. Great. Any specific questions? Four square rules or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Four square. Yeah. I That's never had that understood. Years, actually. No, no concussions lately. <laughs> <laughs> That'll change. Okay, question? Tom, I wanted to um, see if there's any way I could help support you in the parking situation or the pickup situation for Funko. <laughs> I know that... Um, I did take a few jabs, didn't I, last week? Yeah, yes. it, it seems to have improved just by, by peer pressure. Yeah, if, so anybody who's listening tonight, please follow the rules with parking because it's, uh, 
it gets dangerous with those kids walking through the parking lot. And I'm glad you read the notice. That's good. <laughs> okay, could you enlighten us, because or the public, because I'm not sure. I mean, those of us who do not have um, Tom, do you elementary want to, um, school. Or Tom, do you want to summarize? We have, when we dismiss five or 600 kids every day, they all go different ways. And on certain days, there are a lot of pickups. We have a very clear procedure for people driving cars to come into the loop and wait their turns in a designated area, both for safety and for supervision. And occasionally, as the kids say, the grown-ups cut, uh, which is frowned upon by kids. So I'm trying to shame grown-ups <laughs> into following the rules, because the rules really work. The, the most that will cost people to wait in line is maybe 30 seconds. And I always say, if you really want to do it the way I would do it, you can just park and walk up and say hello to your child. So thank you. That's a good message to get across. I know it's uh, anxiety producing for the parent who's down the end of the line, who yeah. knows it's, um, what's the proper time for pickup? You can wait, you can be at the end of the line by the crossing guard waiting for your turn and it seems anxiety producing to pick up your child, but they're safe with a staff in front. Staff members. And if you wait your turn and not cut through the parking lot, or park, du double park, or park going the wrong direction, you actually get there much quicker. The line yeah. goes um, faster. And you can always park legally. You can always park. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank That's you. a non-academic part, but thank you. Mm -hmm. It's important. Right. Okay. Anything else? I'm going to give a report. Pardon? I was just wondering, I, I can't remember if Jeff was going to give a report. Well, we're asking the administrator, each administrator, okay. to have something All to right. report. So. Steve, do you have anything that you want to bring up? Or, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Or, if you don't, your student reps covered a lot, I know. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly echo what Tom said, that it's just been, every year people ask you the same question, what kind of a start have you had? Hey, great start. And, this is a great start. Yeah. Uh, really, really working well. And we put in a lot of time with a lot of folks this summer working on um, professional learning community models working under the goals and uh, we've done some restructuring of our schedule as you could hear from a couple of kids that uh, accommodates those and tries to take advantage of some of the time to get people who teach literacy um, the opportunity built into their schedule to be able to meet during the day and so it causes us to make some shifts in our schedule for instance, uh, instead of having seventh grade and eighth grade on two halves of the cafeteria, we have one half that has a combination of seventh and eighth graders, and then the other seven, the rest of the seventh and eighth graders come at the next lunch period. And it's really one sole purpose. Let's get those people time to meet and work professionally to continue to make progress on our goals around literacy and professional learning communities. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Thanks for the update, Steve. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. Jeff, anything? I, I guess I really just will echo um, the French Fresh Links program that Sasha talked about. Um, I think it's been a labor of love by, love by Troy Henninger and um, uh, Trish Brigham, who's been very instrumental behind the scenes in getting it organized. And it really involves each person who's an upper link, Sasha, is one taking, I think it's 10 to 12 students kind of under their wing um, and just saying hi to them on a regular basis. And that goes an awfully long way. Um, the tailgate event, I will say that um, we had really high school spirit last year compared to where we traditionally are because our kids tend to be so busy, it's really hard for them to come out to other colleagues, friends, peers, games. Um, um, so it's really meaningful to the players when that happens, and it really sets a tone for the school as a whole. <clears throat> um, and I thought our senior class last year had showed some really tremendous positive leadership, and I'm thrilled that this year's senior class are just um, taking that to the next level. So that's going to be fantastic, and I look forward to it. Okay. We'll move on now to new business. Um, item A, consideration to approve the following athletic and extracurricular staff nominations for the 2011-2012 school year. Um, 
And I would, I would think that um, we should probably do these as a slate. Do I have a motion, please? Uh, sure. I move for the approval of the uh, athletic and extracurricular staff nominations for the 2011-2012 school year as listed in the uh, packet. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, and these are posted online for anyone who's interested. Um, any discussion around these nominations? No? All right. So all those in favor? All right, item B, consideration to appoint a school board member as a delegate to the MSBA, um, which is the Maine School Boards Association Annual Assembly. Um, and that will be taking place on Thursday, October 27th, um, 2011 in Augusta. Um, do I have a motion, please? Uh, I move that the school board uh appoint David Hellman as a dele delegate to the Maine School Boards Association annual assembly taking place on Thursday, October 27, 2001 in Augusta. Okay. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. okay. <laughs> Can I make a, a slight amendment to it just to make it easy that, that I also be appointed to go to be, be the school representative to the fall annual conference by the MSBA, which takes place at the same time. Okay. Um, so you can simply move it as as amended. Uh, yes, please please move it as amended. Okay, <laughs> and a second. Yes, second. All right. Um, any discussion? Thank Other you, than, David. For thank you, David. <laughs> well, we actually accomplished some things last year, and hopefully, we will this year. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Um, all those in favor. All right, item number C, consideration to approve the following staff nominations for the 2011-2012 school year. Um, we have an employee named um, Laura Ellis for the RTI Executive Functioning Services teacher. Uh, do I have a motion? Yes, I move to approve uh, Laura Ellis as the RTI Executive Functioning Services teacher, grades 5th and 6th for the 2011-2012 school year. And do I have a second? Second. Okay, David. And um, anything you would like to tell us um, about Laura? Sure. Laura has worked with us in a part-time capacity um, prior years, and we are um, thrilled to have her take on this position. I know um, that... Mr. Connolly and a team of people at the middle school interviewed several applicants, and she was um, their top pick. So we're thrilled that she's taking on the position. Any questions for Meredith? Or? It, it might be helpful just uh, for uh, citizens that aren't in the school system, uh, j j maybe just a little bit on what is a RTI, Executive Functioning Services Teacher's uh, role within the middle school. Sure, and I'll, and I'll begin this, and I'll certainly invite Mr. Connolly to add to uh, my description of that as he sees fit. But um, response to intervention is a structure that was enacted uh, across the country, but Maine adopted the legislation a couple of years ago um, that requires school districts to develop um, systems to intervene appropriately for students who are struggling um, academically, academically, particularly in the areas of math and reading. So this position is intended to provide some targeted support to students who may need to bolster their skills in a particular area. Um, it, um, Laura will be working with fifth and sixth grade students. Um, it's a, it's not, that students aren't permanently assigned to that role. They're there for a period of time to work on um, skills and they move in and out of that. It's available to any student. Um, executive function support refers to those organizational skills um, that are still developing, some of us as adults, um, but certainly middle school is a, is a great place to begin some of those work habits and organizational skills. I don't know if there's anything you'd want to add? Laura will be teaching, uh, the, the response to intervention tells us that, you know, as we're looking at the, the model, it's a tiered model. So the first tier is the classroom and the 
the second in the classroom teacher and the, the general work that goes on, quality, viable curriculum, viable assessments, and then uh, how you know the pyramid that you put in place when things aren't working for students. So the second tier is when you enable the teachers to have specific tools, research-based tools to work with students who are experiencing deficits, but you have to be able to identify those first. So Dean Harris in the uh, technology department and all those folks have really put some good references in, in our hands and made it very teacher friendly to use. So we're, be, we're getting more tech savvy. And then the third tier is when the kids are experiencing quite a bit of difficulty. As, as Mike Matos uh, would say, from uh, he, he's a national consultant formerly of Pioneer Middle School in Ca uh, San Diego. He would say that you have to identify the kids who need CPR, that need triage. Let's service those kids immediately, get them in, into the stream. Um, so we've set up a couple of classes that we think um, will assist them. For instance, it's a double dip literacy. So they go to their regular language arts class, but they have a second period with their homeroom teachers, but they have a second literacy class that they pick up that's working on specific comprehension strategies, reading fluency, some other uh, core elements to that literacy. Um, and then there's, there's a math offering as well. Thank you. And a quick question to Steve. Um, executive functioning um, is not a term. I, I would associate a different term. I, I would associate that term to have a different meaning than I think it does. Isn't that essentially basically teaching uh, middle school students um, that need it study skills, organization yeah. skills, how to allocate their time, how to manage time, so forth? Yeah, pull the executive functioning support, the EFS label out and just put in organizational skills. Um, it, it means that um, how do you assist students to effectively execute the functions of, uh, of being a fifth grade student, a sixth grade student, whatever it happens to be. That's typically the organizational aspect. No. Just a caveat, I mean, not caveat, just a comment. I, I've always thought that that was an, a function we should be start doing in the middle school and not wait to the high school. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I, I'm personally pleased to see that starting to happen in middle school because I think by the time you hit high school, it's enough with the subject matter. You should have the basic skills as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to call the vote if there are no um, additional questions or comments. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. Seven now. All right, um, we'll move on to item D consideration to appoint a school board member to the Transportation Appeals Committee. Um, may I have a motion, please? John? I would like to nominate um, Kate Williams Hewitt. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, any questions or comments? Just to clarify what the Transportation Appeals Committee is. <laughs> yes. um, essentially, it's, it's an opportunity if parents are unsatisfied with um, the transportation routes as they're published to appeal to the board level for some relief. Okay. Is, is there some place they ought to go before they appeal to the board level, or is that the only, is that the appeal process? They certainly process? can contact the transportation office for clarification, but if, if it's not resolved at that level, it, there's an appeal process to the board. Okay. Um, and I, I, you know, it's my understanding Kathy has served in this role historically, so she probably has much more detail than I do, but that, it, you know, that every year there are one or two issues generally that come up. Usually, usually what happens is um, the superintendent and the, the board member that's assigned and one of the uh, folks from uh, community services gets on the bus and drives around oh. and looks at the different stops and the different concerns and you know the location and also um, about uh, a lot of times folks want their child picked up at the end of their driveway but there's a stop that's nearby and it, it also looks at the age of the child and if, it's, if there's a busy intersection. So sometimes you actually end up going on the bus two or three times, um, and usually you're able to resolve the issue. Um, sometimes we're able to accommodate the parents, sometimes we're not. Mm -hmm. um, and it all depends on looking at the big picture for 
all the students and you know if we pick up one person at the end of their driveway um, for maybe a reason that's not as um, clear then you've got other parents that say well I want my child picked up my at the end of my driveway and you know sometimes we'll do that because there's a very busy intersection nearby and the child is six years old um, and then the other times it's a high school student and there isn't a busy intersection nearby and so we might not accommodate that parent so it's it's an inter actually it's an interesting job great thank you for serving all those years Kathy and, and for giving us that explanation and I appreciate that um, okay all those in favor seven now all right, um, we will move on now to item number seven, committee reports. Are there any committee reports? I will give a report, actually. Okay, John. Um, so the Finance Committee met August 23rd, and I think the highlight of the meeting, and, and Meredith touched on this briefly, but was the report from the facilities director, Greg Marles, about um, the summer work that was done. And I, I have a two-page report in front of me, and I won't read it all, but. Um, some highlights, three classrooms painted in Pond Cove, the stairwells at the high school um, have been painted, replacement uh, middle school exterior lobby ceiling installed, um, exterior front painting at the middle school and painting of the columns, um, uh, weather stripping installation on all doors at the high school and, and, and energy um, efficiency has been a big focus um, of the facilities department. Um, uh, they, had, they did a, 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 a fair amount of training of uh, staff, um, maintenance and custodial staff, in terms of um, asbestos awareness, uh, awareness um, bloodborne pathogen training, uh, workplace harassment, and so forth. Um, and then some big projects were um, completed by um, outside contractors, including the installation of um, bleachers at the high school. A uh, new domestic gas-fired water heating system at Pond Cove in the middle school. A uh, new solar domestic water preheating system installed at Pond Cove in the middle school. A new solar domestic water preheating system installed at the high school. And if you're a regular um, viewer of school board meetings, you'll be really excited about this one. New boiler plants installed at the high school. That project is is happily completed um, and will contribute to some significant um, energy savings in our budget this year um, through the efficiency of those new systems. Um, and then, because uh, I'm an IT guy, I'm going to say air conditioning system was installed in the middle school server room, important to keeping those machines working properly. <laughs> and uh, asbestos abatement completed at the high school. And again, there's a lot more on this list, but they, they clearly uh, worked very hard this summer to get the school ready for the year. Thank you, John. Thank you. Any other committee reports? Are we going to have a policy committee um, in, in the next month or so? Yeah, I'll, I will put together a policy committee and get back to the board on when that will be. Okay, great. There are a couple of requests, and I will send those to you for your consideration. That'd be great. Um, and we'll... Um, those will be posted with the agenda um, when you call the meeting then. Okay. Okay. Good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we will also um, be holding a uh, school board retreat uh, so we can look at our um, sort of recommit to the goals that, that we have outlined in the past. Um, we had a spring retreat with our interim superintendent and outlined some goals. and. Um, we'd like to take a look at those with our new superintendent and um, see what else may be on the horizon. Uh, we, that is tentatively scheduled for September 30th, and the, um, the location will be announced shortly. I, I need to find a place to have that. Um, okay, any, yes? Excuse me. Um, I didn't, before you move on, I just wanted to state that the curriculum committee will uh, touch base with Meredith after the retreat and have more okay. information, as well as the Health and Wellness Committee. The teaching and uh, Learning. And teaching and Learning, yes. thank you. That's yes. the wrong word, curriculum. Teaching and Learning Committee will touch base and 
Right. We'll go forward with recommendations for Meredith and um, how they relate to the uh, goals. Right. And to add to that, um, because I think sort of what um, you're getting at is um, during this time, we will also be looking at our career, our, um, our committee structure and um, how that is serving the district. And if we want, um, you know, we will be assessing those committees and, and how we'll continue with those committees. Um, so um, I'm happy to report back on that next month. Um, all right, anything else? I have a quick question. It's, um might have already happened while I was missing for the last minute, but we do have an a insurance a bipartisan committee between the teachers and the uh, two members of the school board. And last I had heard that the teachers were meeting to pick some people. I'm just wondering what the status of that is. Yes. Because I think that's something the town is particularly interested in. Since I'm on the committee, I wouldn't mind knowing about it as well. Um, it is my understanding that their members have not been chosen yet, um, but we are working towards that end um, for their October meeting. So. Okay, is that early October, or do you know early? It is the second Wednesday in October, I believe, that the Education Association meets. Okay, the only reason I state that is uh, right in October, November is about the time um, for free these entities provide you with all this sort of information and plan design and all sorts of things. This is when we're doing in my, my firm. This is the time to get moving October, November, so you can, so you can roll it out in January. So I, I've been out and haven't been in direct communication, but I'm glad to hear this early October, but there'll have to be some work. I mean, now's the time to get a lot of free advice and a lot of free information about um, whether or not there will be savings or not, mm -hmm. but we have to do it in October, November, and December. Okay, all right, thank you, David. All right, um, moving on to item number eight, school board agenda requests. Are there any requests for the agenda next month? Okay. Seeing none, move on to item nine, announcements of upcoming meetings. Uh, look for a policy meeting, it sounds like. Um, and I think I announced the retreat. And that's all I know about you now. On the 27th, I believe there's a finance committee meeting scheduled and then a and our workshop. workshop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if, I, if you're done, Mary, I'd, when, Jeff ran away really quickly. I, uh, I, I thought the open house, I mean, the teacher meet and greet with parents at high school went extremely well, considering that you have to attend eight, seven or eight different periods. And um, I thought it was excellent. Um, I was particularly impressed, and I, I did want to report this because I think it covers a lot of areas we've been working on the last couple of years. I was particularly impressed by what the language people are doing in terms of using computers and tracking, um, without going to a lot of various categories of language like grammar, uh, sentence structure, listening, speaking. And the, each test is graded according to those subgroups. And therefore, they can then break it out and figure out from that exactly what areas certain people need work, what areas the teacher needs to improve. I thought it was a great mixing of technology and uh, to improve the delivery of what used to be a fairly formalistic um, learning. Um, I, I was just impressed by it. And they're rolling it out this year for the first time. OK. Thank you. Um, to um, add on to Meredith's announcement of the um, workshop on the 27th, um, finance will meet and then we will have a workshop on um, two of the goals that the DLT and the board has paired together um, to support and um, those goals are the professional learning communities and um, our second goal would be literacy. So we'll have some brief presentations on those for anyone who's interested. Um, and um, we'll see where we are and where we're headed with those goals. And those will be long-term goals that we are supporting together. So, okay. Um, all right. 
Any other items? Okay. So may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. Did, did we break the record for a while? Hillman was on the board for the shortest meeting. I'm not sure.